So for the Neo, uh, we've got six facets. The first facet is friendliness. Uh, friendly people uh, make friends easily. They're warm, they're comfortable around other people. Unfriendly people are hard to get to know. Uh, they're not comfortable around other people. They're not interested in other people. And they tend to be quite avoidant and distant. Second facet is gregariousness. Gregarious people, um, they like parties and group activities and they like to involve other people in what they do. Uh, low scorers avoid crowds uh, and they prefer solitude to crowds. Assertive people, uh, they take charge, they're leaders, they're persuasive. Uh, unassertive people, let other people lead. Uh, they stay in the background, they don't say much, they don't like attracting attention to themselves. Active people are busy and active even in their spare time. Uh, they're good at multitasking. People with a low activity level uh, take things easy. And su supposedly, uh, people who score high react quickly and people who score low react slowly. Excitement sinking people, they seek out action, adventure and excitement. Uh, they like reckless and dangerous activities. Whereas people who aren't excitement seekers, they're not drawn to extreme sports and they dislike loud music. Cheerful people are um, fun and joyful, positive, amusing, and they laugh a lot. People who aren't cheerful, they're not easily amused, and they're not fond of joking around. So that's extroversion in the, uh, according to the Neo. So next we'll look at uh, the Neo Domains. So Neo Domains just takes a quick, uh, quick overview. It doesn't break things down into facets. Neo Domains is by the same two guys that came up with the Neo, but it just tries to quickly summarize things. It doesn't go into super detail. So extroverts, according to the Neo, uh, they're comfortable around others. That's friendliness. They make friends easily. That's friendliness. They're socially skilled. Not sure what that is. Uh, they're the life of the party. That might be cheerfulness um, or, or gregariousness. They're captivating. Low scorers in extroversion uh, are not talkative. Uh, that's, that's probably low assertiveness. Um, they stay in the background. Uh, it's low assertiveness again. They describe their life as dull. It might be the absence of excitement seeking, possibly. Um, and they don't like to draw attention to themselves. Again, I think that's probably low assertiveness. So Hexaco uh, breaks things down into um, four facets per trait. I'm not sure what they call, if they call them facets or aspects or what. But So first is expressiveness. So expressive people, uh, they talk a lot. They're never at a loss for words. They're the life of the party. They let others know when they're annoyed. They laugh a lot. Low scorers don't talk much, don't draw attention to themselves. They bottle up their feelings and they speak softly. So that sounds like, if comparing it to the Neo, that sounds like a combination of um, assertiveness and cheerfulness. Social boldness. This is the second facet. Uh, make impromptu speeches. Don't mind being the centre of attention. That sounds suspiciously similar to some of the items from the previous facet. Um, they're comfortable around others. That's friendliness, I guess. They're natural leaders. That's assertiveness. They have a strong personality. Low scorers are afraid of public speaking. They stay in the background. Again, this sounds pretty similar to... So both of these sound kind of similar to assertiveness. Find it hard to approach others. Don't want to be the centre of attention. Again, that just seems like assertiveness. Have little to say. God, all of these, all of these just seem like assertiveness. Okay, number... Number facet number three, sociability. Uh, spend their free time with people, talk to many people at parties. They love to chat, they make friends easily, they enjoy being part of a group. So that's a combination of um, gregariousness and friendliness. Uh, low scorers, uh, they're less likely to enjoy interacting with others. They avoid jobs that require social interaction. They're hard to get to know, keep others, others at a distance. Yeah, that's, that's, that's mainly friendliness. Liveliness, uh, facet number four. Uh, high scorers have high energy levels, uh, great stamina, they're active, they smile and laugh a lot and they have fun. Uh, low scorers get tired easily and they're often blue. So this one, um, high, energy, high energy levels, great stamina, active, smile and laugh a lot. This is a combination of cheerfulness and uh, activity level. But then this, this one item here in, in low scoring, often feel blue, that's actually an item that you would normally associate with um, neuroticism. Um, so this is one of the slightly tricky things it, uh, with the uh, big five. You tend to associate certain items with certain traits, but sometimes you'll find that certain items are repeated across different traits in different systems. F feeling depressed, it, it mainly correlates with neuroticism, but it seems like to some extent it, it correlates with um, 
low extroversion as well. A, a kind of aspect of a person's personality can be correlated with like, you know, two or three traits in the big five rather than just one. All right now, the big five aspect scale. So, okay, the big five aspect scale breaks extroversion down into two aspects. Um, so first we have enthusiasm. Uh, so enthusiastic people are warm and friendly. They have fun and laugh a lot. Unenthusiastic people are hard to get to know, distant, not excitable or enthusiastic. So I guess this seems to me to be a combination of um, friendliness and cheerfulness, this enthusiasm. Um, assertiveness. Assertive people take charge. They're charismatic and captivating. They're happy to lead. They're persuasive and proactive. Uh, unassertive people are not assertive. They're not good at influencing others. They prefer to follow others and they keep their opinions to themselves. So that again is... Uh, it's called assertiveness. That is mostly just that's mostly just the assertiveness facet of the um, of the neo extroversion. According to the BFAS, it seems to mainly use friendliness, uh, cheerfulness, and uh, assertiveness. It doesn't use the other facets. So if we if we summarize all of that, which which facets are are, are and aren't used by other um, systems out of the four systems that I'm looking at, friendliness is used by all four. So friendliness is clearly a good indicator of extroversion. Assertiveness is used by all four. Again, that's a really good indicator. Cheerfulness is used by three or four. It's a bit ambiguous whether or not cheerfulness is being referred to in, in the neo-domain system. Uh, gregariousness is only referred to in Hexaco. Um, activity level is ambiguous. That's most. It's mostly just in the Neo, but it's maybe slight, somewhat referred to in Hexaco and BFAS. Excitement seeking. Yeah, excitement, excitement seeking is a tricky one because it, it only appears in the Neo and then it does appear in Hexaco, but it appears in it appears in neuroticism. Uh, low score is for people who score low in, um, in the fearfulness aspect of neuroticism um, have some items which sound similar very similar to the excitement seeking in summary of of the six facets of the neo evaluating them based on uh, how frequently these uh, facets are used in other versions of the big five what we'd say is friendliness assertive friendliness and assertiveness are really good indicators of extroversion cheerfulness is fairly good gregariousness is moderate um, activity level is you know maybe an excitement seeking seems to be a quite a poor quite a poor indicator. So if you're trying to analyze yourself using the NEO, um, you might want to focus mainly on friendliness, assertiveness and cheerfulness, uh, be a bit more ambivalent about gregariousness and activity level and basically completely disregard excitement seeking because it seems like most of the other versions of the big five don't consider that to be an important indicator of extroversion. First facet is anxiety. Uh, anxious people, uh, they worry they're fearful, they're stressed out. People who aren't anxious are relaxed, they're not bothered by things, unperturbed, uh, they don't worry about things. Um, angry people are irritable, they become angry easily, they're easily upset, they're ill-tempered. Low scorers are not often irritated uh, or angry or annoyed about things, they're cool-headed. Facet number three, depression. Uh, depressed people tend to feel blue or down, um, they dislike themselves. They feel that their life is directionless and hopeless. People who aren't depressed or not inclined towards depression, they don't tend to feel blue. They, they feel comfortable or pleased with themselves. Self-conscious people supposedly are easily intimidated. That doesn't sound that similar to self-consciousness to me, but apparently it is. They're worried they'll do the wrong thing, so they're self-conscious about, like, you know, have I, have I done the wrong thing? They're shy, they're uncomfortable... Uh, around people that again this is one of those things where elements of the big five kind of cross over to each other like being uncomfortable around people that's that's also an indicator of um, low friendliness for extroversion um, so that's maybe not a brilliant indicator of um, neuroticism because it you know these a, a good indicator is supposed to be independent it's not supposed to have items that appear in different various different traits so that's a bit fishy they feel awkward during conversation uh, low scorers for self-consciousness, they're not easily embarrassed, they're comfortable in difficult and unfamiliar social situations, they can stand up for themselves. Again, this thing of high scorers are easily intimidated, low scorers can stand up for themselves. That doesn't sound like it would correlate that highly with self-consciousness, that sounds like 
it sounds like maybe they're grouping some things that don't quite belong together, but I haven't seen the actual, um, you know, correlation data, so I don't know. <clears throat> maybe it's higher than I think it is. High scorers overindulge in eating and drinking. They do things they regret. Uh, low scorers do not overindulge. They resist temptation. They control their cravings. I often think that that, that surely... Um, that surely crosses over with high conscientiousness if you have a lot of self-control. Uh, self-discipline is one of the um, one of the uh, facets of high conscientiousness. Self-discipline is like, you know, do you put off work or do you get down straight to it, get down to it straight away? Um, I can't help thinking that people who get straight to their work and people who kind of control their impulses and control their cravings, that all, that all sounds like, you know, kind of prefrontal cortex kind of thing. That sounds, sounds kind of like the same thing, so... It was strange to me to see that appearing in in two separate traits. It doesn't doesn't quite seem right. In moderation, uh, people who are not immoderate, they don't overspend. Um, so vulnerability now. People who score high on vulnerability, they panic. They feel overwhelmed. They tend to be indecisive. Again, that's another one where I'm sure I've seen descriptions of conscientiousness, which describe people as being decisive. That's another one which feels like it doesn't. It's not, not a very high quality indicator. Low scorers are calm during tense and high pressure situations. Uh, they cope with problems and they overcome setbacks. So that's uh, neuroticism, according to the NEO. Let's do NEO domains next. High scorers often feel blue or down. That's depression. They dislike themselves. I'm not sure what that is. They have mood swings. That's probably, um, that's probably most similar to anger. If, if you're easily upset... Um, that sounds like kind of like mood swings. Uh, they panic. That was, was that's vulnerability, isn't it? Panicking. Low scorers are rarely blue. That's uh, depression again. Rarely irritated. That's anger. Comfortable or pleased with themselves, which I think that was that was um, that was de that was depression, wasn't it? I think yeah yeah. People who are comfortable and pleased with them just with themselves um, have low depression. They're not bothered by things. Uh, that's anger. So that sounds like that's that's mostly sounds to me like that's mostly depression and anger being summarized there. It doesn't doesn't feel like it touched on uh, definitely didn't touch on immoderation. Def it de didn't touch on self consciousness. Don't think it touched on anxiety. Briefly touched on vulnerability. H e x a c o. So honesty, humility, emotionality, extroversion. X for extroversion. A agreeableness. C conscientiousness. O openness. So. Um, for some reason, maybe because it just didn't fit, maybe they thought it worked better, maybe they thought it described it better, maybe, well, I don't know, maybe it just fit with their acronym better. Uh, instead of calling it neuroticism, they call it emotionality, but it's basically, when you hear these these items, you'll you'll see it's basically the, the same thing as, as neuroticism, pretty much. I mean, it, they, they get a bit creative with it, it's a bit different, but it's basically neuroticism. Four facets, first is fearfulness. <laughs> It's not, it's not very flattering. Uh, high scorers for fearfulness are cowardly. Uh, they tremble or panic when they're in danger. So that's that's vulnerability. They worry about being mugged. Worrying, that's, uh, that's anxiety, isn't it? They're wary of participating in an extreme sports. See, that's... That's weird because that's um, that's extroversion, extreme sports. That would be the excitement seeking aspect of, um, of extroversion. Low scorers get a kick out of frightening or dangerous situations. Again, that's that's the excitement seeking part of extroversion. Think they will be good at rescuing others in danger. That's quite a specific item. They're risk takers. Again, that risk takers, maybe that's got a bit of like low conscientiousness, a bit of um, a bit of high excitement seeking in extroversion. So that I would suspect that's probably not a very high quality indicator because I feel like that probably crosses over with too many other facets. Uh, anxiety. So again, anxiety, we've, we've got that in both of them. It's probably quite similar. Worry about unimportant things. They become stressed. They're upset by unpleasant thoughts. They panic. Low scorers rarely worry. They're seldom depressed. So we don't we don't have a, a separate facet for depression here. Depression is lumped in with... Um, oh, depression is not really mentioned this much in, in, in the uh, neuroticism facet of hexaco emotionality. Depression doesn't come up that much because it comes up a little bit in the... Uh, in the low extroversion doesn't really feature that much here. I'm a little bit skeptical about these this hexaco system. It says for low liveliness on hexaco, people who score low in liveliness often feel blue, and people who score low on low for anxiety of the emotionality the emotionality trait they're seldom depressed. I would have thought often feel blue and seldom depressed. You would have thought they're 
you'd have thought the inverse correlation between those was you know extremely high you would have thought they're practically they're just inverse items identical items but in the inverse so again it seems a bit fishy that they're kind of placed in two separate um two separate traits so i don't like that that's I, I disapprove of that. People with low, low anxiety, they're not easily disturbed. They're calm under pressure. They don't worry about what's in the past. Oh, this is interesting. This one, I don't think this one appears in, in any of the other versions of the Big Five, really. Um, this is this is kind of unique to, to Hexaco. High scorers for dependents um, need to be reassured. They're easily influenced. They seek approval. They need protection. They need help. They don't conceal their sadness. They seek support and they want to be liked. There's no... Um, there's no keys for uh, low scorers there. It's all just, those are all just descriptions of high scorers. It doesn't tell you what people who score low on dependence are like. Sentimentality. This is an extremely dubious item. This item, feel other people's emotions. This appears in the sentimentality. This appears for the neuroticism uh, trait for Hexaco. It appears for the uh, openness trait on the Neo. And it appears for the agreeableness trait for the Big Five. So that's another one where... I don't like that. It doesn't make sense to me that the, the exact feel other people's emotions, the exact same item appears uh, under three different traits for three different systems. So that's that seems like bullshit to me. That shouldn't. If, if one of the big fives uh, claims to accuracy and validity is that they're measuring genuinely independent traits, it doesn't make sense to me that they can also have uh, three items that are appearing. They can have the same item that appears under three different traits that that completely goes against the uh, principle of making sure that you're measuring totally independent traits. Anytime you hear someone associating the uh, the ability to feel other people's emotions with any particular personality trait, I would be extremely skeptical of that because it seems like it correlates with a bunch of different things. Um, yeah, so sentimentality. Uh, the sentimental people, they feel sad when hearing sad news. They cry during movies. Again, this sounds a bit like depression. It feels like they might have... Maybe it's not that similar to depression. They're sensitive to the needs of others. See, that would be that would normally be an agreeableness. That would be like altruism, probably, in, in the Neo for agreeableness. Um, they're moved by the misfortune of others. Again, that's, that's sympathy. That would be sympathy in the Neo under agreeableness. That Again, that's another one of those ones where I'm not sure this should be listed as a facet of uh, neuroticism, emotionality, neuroticism. Sentimental people, they feel sad when hearing sad news. They cry during movies. They're sensitive to the needs of others. Uh, they're moved by the misfortunes of others. This this to me just sounds like um, altruism, sympathy, one of those from, from the neo, from neo-agreeableness. Whether or not something that appears in neo-agreeableness belongs in uh hexaco emotionality is a bit a bit dubious because it's like you're, you're splitting the same it seems to me like you're splitting the same basic items between two different traits and two different systems whereas they should should really stick within the the same traits ideally low scorers for sentimentality they don't cry during sad movies or when reading sad novels they're not bothered by the suffering of strangers so that again that's um that's low uh sympathy from agreeableness from the neo they're alienated by displays of emotion and they rarely become emotional. So neuroticism is split up into two aspects in the BFAS, uh, volatility and withdrawal. So for volatility, high scorers can easily become angry, upset or irritated and have highly changeable moods. So that's basically just anger from the Neo. Uh, low scorers are rarely irritated or annoyed. They're composed and controlled. Yeah, basically anger. Uh, withdrawal. High scorers are beset by feelings of doubt, fear and worry. Uh, they often feel threatened, overwhelmed or discouraged. That sounds like a mixture of anxiety and vulnerability from the Neo. Um, low scorers rarely feel depressed or embarrassed. So that's that's bringing in depression and self-consciousness and they're comfortable with themselves. So that's all four versions of neuroticism compared across these these four systems. So to summarize, um, anxiety appears in all four. So anxiety is a good indicator of neuroticism. Vulnerability, uh, anxiety and vulnerability, I sometimes struggle to, to tell the difference between them. I mean, what was it again? Anxiety, anxious people, they worry, they're fearful, they're stressed out. Vulnerable people, they panic, they feel overwhelmed, they're indecisive. People who score low are relaxed, um, not bothered about things. They don't worry. Calm during tense situations. I mean, these kind of sound like slightly different ways of describing the same basic 
element to me. I don't know. So anxiety and vulnerability, maybe because they're just both quite similar. Those those appear in all four versions of neuroticism. So that's a good. Those are good indicators of neuroticism. But, but anger apparently appears in um, appears in Hexaco under agreeableness. Hexaco is funny. It kind of jumbles jumbles these things up quite a lot. Um, anger appears in the BFAS and the neo domains. So that's a fairly good indicator. Depression again is is mixed up. Uh, we've already referred to depression. Introverts, according to Hexaco, are more likely to feel blue, I think it was. What was it exactly? Yeah, so introverts often feel blue. So depression's kind of kind of referenced under a different trait in Hexaco, which is not good for, for, for the um, construct validity of, of, of this trait. It appears in the neo-domains. Self-consciousness appears in the BFAS. What was that item? It was... Um, yeah, there's just just one item here. Uh, uh, people who score low in withdrawal and the BFAS rarely feel embarrassed. So that's not a very good. That only is you know vaguely referenced in one one version of um, one uh, one version of the Big Five besides the Neo. And in moderation only appears in the the, the Neo. The Neo with the six facets. It doesn't appear in Neo domains. Doesn't appear in um, the BFAS. Doesn't appear in uh, Hexaco. Overall, anxiety and vulnerability. Those are good indicators of neuroticism. Anger and depression are fairly good, but Hexaco complicates things slightly. Self-consciousness, not very good. And immoderation, again, not, not very good. Pretty rubbish. Okay, so the six facets of conscientiousness, according to the NEO. Uh, self-efficacy, high scorers complete tasks successfully, excel in their endeavours, they're self-assured, they find good solutions. Low scorers tend to misjudge and misunderstand situations. They sometimes struggle to foresee consequences and they might not feel useful. Orderly people like order, regularity and tidiness. They're meticulous. They follow their plans. Uh, low scorers uh, forget to put things back, create mess and disorder and are not bothered by others who do the same. Uh, dutifulness, facet number three. Dutiful people follow rules, keep their promises, pay bills on time, tell the truth, listen to their conscience. Low scorers break rules and promises. They get others to do their duties for them. They don't follow instructions uh, and they can tend to be a little flexible with the truth. Facet number four, achievement striving. Oriented around pursuing goals and taking action. Industrious. They go the extra mile. They exec expect exemplary performance from themselves and others. Uh, low scorers in achievement striving are not highly motivated and they try to get by with minimal effort. So I guess that's like if you work hard or if you're kind of lazy. Self-disciplined people uh, complete tasks promptly. They're always prepared. They see plans through. Low scorers uh, struggle to get started on work, waste time and postpone decisions. That seems to be mo mostly, you know, do you get things started right away or do you put them off and procrastinate? Cautiousness. Cautious people avoid mistakes. They're careful with their words and they stick to their plans. Low scorers in cautiousness are rash. Uh, they don't think before acting. They're spontaneous and they make last minute plans. High scorers in conscientiousness, this is Neo Domains. High scorers in conscientiousness are always prepared. They pay attention to detail. They complete chores and tasks promptly. They stick to their plans. Uh, low scorers waste time, struggle to start work, then only do enough to get by. They leave things unfinished and they shirk their duties. Uh, yeah, Hexaco breaks conscientiousness into four aspects. Organisation. Uh, organized people are tidy, they finish their chores promptly, they prefer order, they want things to be just right. Low scorers have messy rooms, leave their belongings around, don't finish what they start, forget to put things back, they're not bothered by disorder. Uh, diligence, diligent people work hard to succeed, they start work easily, they're exacting, they complete their tasks. Low scorers do just enough to get by, stop when things become too difficult, don't do enough work, do nothing in general. Um, and they lose interest in tasks. Uh, people who score high in perfectionism pay attention to details. They attain perfection. Uh, they have an eye for detail, take care of every detail, seems to be very detail-oriented. Dislike imperfection, detect mistakes, insist on quality. Low scorers don't, don't pay attention to details, just let things happen. Yeah, this this very, uh, very detail-oriented, this doesn't really... Um, I don't think there's anything exactly like this in the uh, maybe orderliness. Yeah, I don't think I don't think there's anything exactly like that in the neo. I think that's kind of an original, fairly original um, 
aspect of conscientiousness for Hexaco. Uh, prudence. Oh, this seems to be mostly uh, cautiousness. Prudent people avoid mistakes. They stick to their plans. Imprudent people jump in without thinking, make rash decisions, behave impulsively when bothered, make careless mistakes, don't know why they behave the way they do, act foolishly. So with the addition of a, a couple of things like, um, you know, acting foolishly, that's basically the same as uh, neo-cautiousness. Uh, big five aspect scale. Conscientiousness is broken into two facets, aspects. Industriousness. Uh, industrious people accomplish their plans and do so in a timely fashion. They're self-assured in their competence. Low scorers waste time, procrastinate, they make mistakes, they don't concentrate, they become distracted. Uh, aspect number two, orderliness. High scorers like order, tidiness and routines. They enforce rules, they're precise. Low scorers leave things lying around, they're not bothered by messiness and disorder, they dislike routines. Orderliness appears in all four versions of conscientiousness. So does self-discipline, so that's a good facet. Self-discipline, again, is um, doing things kind of on time, getting started on, you know, doing things right away rather than putting them off. Self-efficacy is in three out of the four. Self-efficacy is sort of like confidence feeling like you know what you're doing achievement striving is in three of the four that's basically how how hard you work how much work you do cautiousness yeah do you think are you careful do you think things through before you act that appears in three of the four systems um so all of those are, are quite good dutifulness is a, a bit of a tricky one because it it appears under sincerity of the honest humility factor in hexaco which is sort of like part of hexaco's version of agreeableness they've sort of split agreeableness into two things if if we look at dutifulness one of the indicators for a high scorer in dutifulness is that they follow rules one of the indicators for low scorers is that they break rules whereas if we then look at agreeableness there's a facet called morality this is still these are both in the neo high scorers in morality tend to follow rules and low scorers tend to cheat and bend the rules. So again, it's one of these things where we've got two very similar, you know, following rules. Again, both both of them, the item is that they follow rules. Breaking and bending rules, you know, it's kind of the same thing, basically. So in both of these, uh, dutifulness in conscientiousness and morality and ag agreeableness. And also we see, we see in the honesty, humility trait in Hexaco, which is more like agreeableness. We see something similar to... Um, to dutifulness appearing. So I think all those five facets of conscientiousness from the Neo are all uh, pretty good quality indicators of conscientiousness, but just that one dutifulness, because it's it's too similar to stuff that appears under agreeableness, it's not, it's not a good indicator of conscientiousness. First facet of agreeableness, trust. High scorers are trusting uh, and they regard people as good, moral and well-intentioned. Low scorers are wary, suspicious and distrustful. So they don't believe that others are moral and well-intentioned. So trust fundamentally is just like, do you believe that other people are have good intentions or bad intentions? You could simplify it as like trusting people think humanity in general, people in general are good. People who aren't trusting think that humanity, people in general are bad. Morality, second facet. Uh, moral people tend to follow rules and dislike cheating. Low scorers are manipulative, they cheat and bend rules, they obstruct pressure and take advantage of others, they may feign sympathy. Um, so as I've said already, this one, this one's a bit similar to um, dutifulness of conscientiousness, so I'm, I'm not that keen on it. A3, altruism. High scorers make others feel welcome, anticipate the needs of others and show concern, they're helpful. Low scorers look down on others, don't care if they make others uncomfortable, they are not generous with their time. So I think this one, we already covered this one. This one was similar to, this was similar to some aspects of emotionality. Yeah, uh, the sensitive, emotional, sentimental people in Hexaco are sensitive, that is neurotic people. They're sensitive to the needs of others and they're moved by the misfortune of others. So I don't know, it seems, seems a bit similar to their version of neuroticism. Uh, people with low altruism look down on others, don't care if they make others uncomfortable, they're not generous with their time. Facet for cooperation. Uh, high scorers, that they're, they're kind of not like opinionated. They don't like say, oh, we have to do things my way. Um, they don't want to be confrontational or pushy. Low scorers are sharp-tongued, contrarian, confrontational and vengeful. Um, to a large extent, uh, agreeableness is sort of like, are you like a good person or bad person? 
to, to some extent. That's a bit of an oversimplification, but it's not it's not too far off. If you talk about a nice person versus a mean person, you're kind of largely just talking about agreeableness. Modest people are disinclined to brag about themselves. They believe they're fairly average. Uh, low scorers think they are better than others. They're inclined to brag about being virtuous and knowledgeable. So yeah, it's like modesty is just like the degree to which you think you're better than other people. Uh, or the degree to which you, you know, think oh, I'm, I'm no better than we're all equal sort of thing. Facet six, sympathy. High scorers are sympathetic, especially towards those who are worse off. So just because, you know, you don't, you're not sympathetic towards like Donald Trump, that doesn't mean you have low a low score in sympathy. It seems to be specifically um, oriented towards uh, your sympathy towards people who are worse off than you. Uh, low scorers are not interested in people's problems. They're not soft hearted. They believe in an eye for an eye and they they're disinclined to assist the weak and the needy. So we we'll go straight to Hexaco this time because it's agreeableness is is most interesting in, in Hexaco because it's it's kind of the reason for the invention of Hexaco is largely because of controversy about whether agreeableness should be one trait or split up into two traits. So we'll start with the agreeableness trait of Hexaco. Four facets. Uh, facet number one, forgiveness. These people are loving, forgiving and nice. Low scorers are unforgiving. They hold grudges. They're vengeful. They're not trusting. So that's interesting. That's that's mixing two facets there. Not trusting, that's obviously trust. Vengeful, that seems to be, that's cooperation in both the item for low scorers in cooperation and in the Neo and the item for low scorers in forgiveness in hexaco um, is is vengeful so that's a mixture of uh, cooperation and trust gentleness uh, gentle people rarely complain take things as they come they're accepting they have nice things to say about everyone low scorers are frustrated by the shortcomings of others they're judgmental they find faults with others they speak ill of others they're sharp-tongued they're critical of others sharp-tongued that's that's cooperation again so this seems to have taken cooperation and divided it split it up a bit, divided it between a, a few different facets, which makes sense because there's six facets of the Neo, but if you split agreeableness up, up into two traits, each with four facets, you've got eight facets in total. So they're dividing six facets up into eight facets. So it makes sense that you'll have some of the facets from the Neo kind of spread across different different ones in Hexaco. Flexibility. Flexible people are good at taking advice. People who score low are often annoyed by others. That's interesting. That's that sounds more like anger from uh, from neuroticism in the neo. Um, they react badly to criticism. They dislike having their plans changed by others. They're stubborn. They don't like to be contradicted. They're hard to please and hard to reason with. Patience. Patient people are not easily brought to anger. Again, that sounds more like neuroticism. They're patient. They're rarely irritated. That's that's anger again. Low scorers are easily made angry, irritated, or upset. Yeah, so anger didn't anger doesn't really show up in emotionality. The um, the hexaco equivalent of neuroticism, anger doesn't really make an appearance. Anger seems to have mostly been moved to agreeableness. Anger is represented as a lack of patience under the umbrella of the agreeableness trait, rather than belonging to neuroticism in the neo. Sincerity: high scorers are unpretentious. Low scorers are smarmy, manipulative. They show off. They're disloyal. They say fake it to make it. They feign sympathy. They're social chameleons. <laughs> They're bootlickers and they're servile. Hexaco is like maybe the least kind of flattering, least likely to kind of couch its language of all the personality systems I've, I've encountered. People who score high in fairness are unlikely to cheat or steal, but would feel bad if they ever did follow rules. So this thing about following rules, breaking rules, this is what we've already seen in... Um, in both dutifulness, in conscientiousness from the Neo, and also in morality from agreeableness from the Neo. And this is in honesty, humility this time rather than... So So generally this thing about following rules, the degree to which someone follows rules doesn't seem to be a very good metric for evaluating someone's personality because it seems like it's too divided up between various different ways of, of, of measuring personality traits. It doesn't like fit neatly into you know one of a set number of personality traits is a bit it's a bit multifaceted low scorers admire skillful deceit they cheat they steal they betray trust they don't feel bad about taking advantage of others uh, greed avoidance uh, high scorers don't want to be famous and don't strive for elegance 
Low scorers love luxury, they desire power, money and status, they try to impress others, they prefer expensive restaurants, that seems like quite a specific item, uh, they're out for personal gain. Modesty, uh, so we already had modesty and that already appears in the, ne in the Neo. Uh, modesty. High scorers don't think they're better than others, regard themselves as average or ordinary. Low scorers want to be more powerful than others, think they're more better and more competent than others, like to attract attention, tend to show off and boast. So that's pretty similar to the to the Neo, it's not exactly the same. Uh, all right, so that covers Hexaco. Let's look at the Neo domains. Agreeableness. Agreeable people speak well of others, believe others are well-intentioned. They're respectful, accepting, they make others feel at ease. Low scorers are sharp-tongued, adversarial, suspicious of others, vengeful and insulting. That's a fairly broad, I think that covers quite a few different facets from the Neo. Uh, BFAS, agreeableness divides up into two aspects, compassion and politeness. Compassionate people ask about others' well-being, they're sympathetic, they feel others' emotions. There's that tricky feel others' emotions item which appears in, so it's agreeableness here in the BFAS, it's emotionality in hexaco which is neuroticism and it's openness in the neo so that's that's a terrible item for for measuring a person's personality you know accurately and reliably they're interested in the lives of others they do things for others they're disinterested in the feelings lives and problems of others they don't make time for others they don't have a soft side so that seems to be sympathy to a large degree i think altruism as well Politeness. Polite people respect authority. They don't want to be pushy. Again, this respect authority, thats I kind of feel like that's probably quite similar to this thing of bending rules, following rules. I feel like all of these are a bit, a bit fishy. Don't want to impose on or pressure others. Low scorers are insulting. They think they're superior. They take advantage of others. They enjoy conflict and confrontation and they prioritize personal gain. So if we summarize agreeableness across these various systems, what do we have? Cooperation appears in all the systems, that's a good metric. Trust appears in Hexaco and Neo Domains, but it doesn't appear in the BFAS. Altruism maybe sort of half appears in all of them, just it's a bit ambiguous. Morality is tricky because it, it's moved to honesty, humility in Hexaco. Modesty, same again, it's moved to honesty, humility in Hexaco. And sympathy appears in the BFAS. So probably cooperation and trust are the best indicators of agreeableness. Altruism maybe. The others are like not great, but not, not too bad either. All right, so finally, openness. So the Neo, imagination. Uh, high scorers have a vivid imagination, uh, flights of fantasy. They're often reflecting or lost in thought. Low scorers do not daydream or become lost in thought and don't have a strong imagination. So that's, um, are you imaginative and do you spend a lot of time just kind of daydreaming and thinking about things? Artistic interests. High scorers believe art is important. They enjoy music. They notice beauty, especially in nature. Low scorers do not enjoy art, poetry, museums, concerts and dance performances. So this is like your interest in art, but it's more, it's a bit dubious to sort of say, oh, like, you know, heavy metal and horror films and stuff are technically art. It's like, mm, that's not really, it's like certain certain forms of art are more strongly correlated with high openness than others. So like, you know, classical music and poetry and painting and things like that are more, I guess it's hard to extricate it from like, you know, cultural influences, what kind of socioeconomic class do you belong to? But, you know, theoretically certain, certain forms of art are more about the um, kind of intellectual, spiritual aspect rather than just being you know, like superhero movies, a Marvel film is art, and uh, the, the poetry is of some ancient Greek poet are art, but they're two very different forms of art, which are kind of touching on very different kind of interests. And, you know, they appeal to very different kinds of people. So one of those certain forms of art are good indicators of openness, and certain other forms of art, sort of like, I guess, you know, to put it simply kind of highbrow and lowbrow art, uh, emotionality. Yeah, this is a little bit confusing because there's a facet. The uh, the trait emotionality in Hexaco is their version of neuroticism. So it's a little bit confusing, these different names. Uh, emotionality, though, this is one of those ones which I don't like because it crosses over 
between other traits too much. Emotional people experience intense emotions and also feel the emotions of others. That's the one. Feel the emotions of others. That's the dubious one. They're passionate about causes. They try to understand themselves. Low scorers are unemotional and unaware of their emotions and they struggle to understand emotional people. So as I've already said, this one, this item, feeling the emotions of others, it appears under the version of neuroticism in Hexaco and the version of agreeableness in the Big Five Aspect Scale. Yeah, I don't like that. That's dubious. Adventurousness. Oh, this is, yeah. So uh, adventurous people, according to the Neo, they prefer variety to routine. They have diverse interests. They like to visit new places and try new things. Low scorers are conventional. They're creatures of habit. They dislike change and stick to what they know. This is one of those ones where, again, it's a bit tricky. It might maybe correlates a bit with like low neuroticism and high extroversion. I think there are items in some of these other systems which like excitement seeking and adventurousness there's there's definitely a degree of crossover there excitement seeking being a facet of extroversion people who score low in neuroticism in hexaco they uh you know they're more likely to be into thrill seeking and stuff so i mean it's it's not exactly the same but it's a bit of a crossover with some of these items Intellect. Now, this is one of the best indicators of uh, openness. Intellectual people enjoy thinking, solving complex problems and reading challenging material. Low scorers are uninterested in and can struggle with abstraction, philosophy and theory, and they avoid difficult reading material. So I always think it's it's like the best indicator for this is like, do you read like challenging non-fiction material? Because I feel like it can be hard to say what is challenging, but with like fiction, it's a bit like... I don't know, it's not really the same thing. If if you're just reading, you know, Madame Bovary or something like that, are you reading it from like a, a perspective of like appreciating like the era and the literary trends of the era? Are you just reading it because you're interested in the story and interested in the characters? Although I guess if you did read Madame Bovary in that sense, that would maybe give you a high score in, in the artistic interests section of openness. So maybe that's not so bad. You know, the best indicator would be reading something like philosophy kind of abstract, hard to understand, usually more kind of non-fiction things. I don't know, economics, politics, history, things like that, maybe. Uh, liberalism. Oh, I don't like this one. <laughs> this one's this one's bogus. High scorers uh, are politically liberal, progressive. They believe in moral relativism. They prefer criminals to be rehabilitated rather than punished. See, this, this, this surely crosses over with agreeableness. Um, you know, sympathy for people worse off than yourselves. I think one of the items from agreeableness was um, people with low agreeableness believe in an eye for an eye. So there's clear, there's clear crossover here. Um, low scorers in liberalism tend to believe that theirs is the only true faith. That's assuming that they're religious. Uh, they tend to be politically conservative. They tend to be opposed to subsidies for the arts. They're tough on crime and they're patriotic. So right away, that item, tough on crime, and the item from low agreeableness, um, an eye for an eye, you know, that's 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 too similar. Straight away, that's that's an indication that this this facet is a little bit bogus. Um, and also, you've got to remember that the um, the neo was created in the like the nineteen eighties, nineteen seventies, and we live in a much more politically polarized time now. It's like in, in this era, if you if if your family and all your friends are liberal and you suddenly decide, oh, I'm going to be a conservative or whatever, you, you know, you can have like family members not speak to you anymore. You know, the the rates of, of liberal people who say they wouldn't date um, a Trump supporter or who say, um, you know, they they uh, they wouldn't accept their daughter to marry a Trump supporter, you know, the, the the rates, the answers that people give to quizzes that ask that question are like astronomical. It's like, it's like 70% of liberals would not consider dating a, dating a, um, a Republican in America. And that, you know, that wasn't the case back in the eighties when this stuff was created. So I think the, you know, the dramatic increase in political polarization changes the, changes the face of, of, of this facet. I don't, I think you have to consider the fact that we live in politically different times and what might have seemed like a good... If liberalism is an indicator of personality, then it's like how often do people actually embrace the side of the political spectrum that connects with them, that feels meaningful to them? Seems It seems like, for the most part, it's much more like a tribal thing. Like, you know, if everyone in your family has voted for Labour, how, real, how likely is it that you're going to suddenly vote Conservative just because you have high openness? You know... It, 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 it just seems like a really low quality metric to me. So if we go to Neo Domains, 
Um, now, it's worth bearing in mind that both these versions, versions of the Neo, they're both by Costa and McRae. So um, openness, open people believe art is important. Uh, they have a viv vivid imagination. They tend to vote liberal. They shift the conversation to lofty topics. They're interested in new ideas. Low scorers don't care for art, art museums or abstract ideas. They avoid philosophical discussion and they tend to vote conservative. So even though there's only like 10 items in this version of the Neo Domains system that I'm looking at, we still have vote liberal for high scorers of openness and vote conservative for low scorers. So 20% of the indicators for openness in this system are dedicated to political affiliation. But again, this both of these versions are by Costa and McRae based on their work in like the 1980s. So that's that. so. Even though it seems like there's two versions, they're both two versions coming from the same source. So it's you, you got to bear that in mind. So Hexaco um, openness to experience. They call it aesthetic appreciation rather than artistic appreciation. High scorers believe art is important. They become immersed in music. They see beauty in things that others may not. They like being close to the earth. They have read the great literary classics. So there you go. Reading Madame Bovary, I guess, would qualify as a, a high score in. Uh, aesthetic appreciation. Low scorers don't like art. They rarely notice the emotional aspects of paintings and pictures. They don't like poetry. They don't like concerts. They don't enjoy watching dance performances. So we just have immersed in music, but um, read the great literary classics. That, that's not like read novels. If you're reading like YA n novels, if you're reading like the Harry Potter novels, or some people would call those literary classics, but whatever. If you're reading uh, Harry Potter novels, those don't necessarily qualify as an indicator of high openness. Rarely notice the emotional aspects of paintings and pictures. Again, paintings. They don't like poetry. Again, poetry. They don't like concerts. I guess that could mean rock concerts, so that's ambiguous. They don't enjoy watching dance performances. I've never watched a dance performance in my life. Maybe I have low openness. Um, inquisitiveness. Inquisitive people. This this will just be like intellectualism, I assume. They're interested in science. They like to explore, they enjoy intellectual games, they like to read challenging material. There's that item again, reading challenging material. They find political discussions interesting. They have a rich vocabulary. Now this is interesting, find political discussions interesting because, I don't know, if someone if someone's extremely liberal, how, how interesting are they going to find political discussions if, they, if they're on like the extreme liberal end and they've already decided that they have all the answers in our minds, do people on like the extreme far left who supposedly have high openness according to the Neo, you know, w would those be people where you can just imagine them having a, a discussion about politics and thinking, mm, this is interesting, I'm getting something from this, you're getting something from this. You know, that's that's not my notion of the modern person. That's not been my experience of the modern person on the extreme far left. Far more, I think, you know, in, in, the, in the 2020s and the modern era, extremely liberal people, you know, they don't find political discussions interesting or they, they don't find political dis discussions that deviate from their, you know, very specific set of conclusions and assumptions. They don't find those interesting. They find them, you know, alienating and perhaps even offensive. Uh, inquisitive people have a rich vocabulary. Low scorers don't know much about history. They avoid difficult reading material. They're not interested in political or social issues. They won't look deeply into a subject. Uh, creativity. High scorers have a vivid imagination. They're original. They discuss lofty topics. They're full of ideas. They're inventive. They have good ideas. Low scorers don't have a good imagination. They have trouble imagining things. They have trouble guessing how others will react. And that's interesting. That's That doesn't seem to have anything to do with... Um, Half these other items, that sounds more like the emotionality facet of openness. You know, being able to feel other people's emotions is kind of a, a, an empathy thing. They seldom experience sudden intuitive insights. Interesting. Uh, unconventionality. This is something which I don't think really appears in the other versions. This is, this is unique to Hexaco, I think. Unconventional people are eccentric. Their ideas can surprise people. They behave strangely. Oh, this sounds like... This almost sounds like a personality disorder. They rebel against authority. They swim against the current. So now that low scorers would hate to be considered odd or strange. They like being considered normal and they avoid, actively avoid complex people. Open, right, so they actually call this, this trait openness slash intellect. Open people perceive and enjoy the beauty of art, music, poetry and nature. Again, pay attention to the specific specific things that they're pointing out. Poetry comes up. In all of these, poetry comes up. So, you know, I would think, again, reading poetry is probably a better indicator of 
high openness than just reading novels in general. There's something about poetry which only appeals to people with high openness. Uh, nature, a lot of these mention nature, so just, just being someone who, you know, I don't know, likes garden gardening or likes getting out into the wild, you know, that's an indicator of high openness. Open people like to reflect and ruminate, that's the imagination facet. Uh, they need a creative outlet, that's creativity from Hexaco. Uh, low scorers tend not to enjoy or respond emotionally to poetry and art. They tend not to daydream or become lost in thought. That's the imagination facet again. Now, intellect. intellect. Intellectual people are quick thinkers. They're adept with complexity and large amounts of information. They have a broad vocabulary. Low scorers are slow learners. They struggle with abstraction, philosophy and challenging reading material. So this one is very much more correlated with IQ, I would think. If you're a quick thinker versus a slow learner, if you're good at absorbing large amounts of information, that really just seems like IQ to me. So, I, I mean, it's, it's long been known that openness correlates with IQ more than any other trait of the big five. But I think this particular aspect, intellect, this of all the different versions of the big five, this seems to be the one which is most explicitly, um, you know, happy to correlate itself, associate itself with, with IQ. So if we compare all of them now, imagination appears in all of them. So so that those items of uh, do you spend a lot of time sort of thinking and ruminating? Uh, do you have an active imagination? That that appears in all the versions of the Big Five. Artistic interests that appears in all versions of the Big Five. So definitely imagination, artistic interests. Those are really good indicators of, of openness. Intellect um, that appears in most of them. I think it was a bit ambiguous in the neo domain system. Imagination, artistic interests and intellect are all good indicators of uh, openness. Liberalism is, is, is dog shit. I don't like it at all. Um, I think there are lots of reasons to feel that it, you know, maybe was valid in the 80s, but, you know, not anymore. Not, it's only used in the work of Costner and McRae. Hexaco and BFAS don't use it. Adventurousness, that doesn't really appear in any other version of the Big Five. You know, it, for me, it crosses over too much with like excitement seeking of extroversion or like um you know low neuroticism yeah I, I don't like it and then emotionality is terrible emotionality is the worst indicator of probably the worst facet of of, of any trait in in the neo because we see it in uh, we see it in neuroticism for hexaco that that one item feels the emotions of others maybe if you took different items and just remove that one uh, feeling the emotions of others maybe it wouldn't be as bad but i you know i, I don't I, th I think it's extremely dubious.